Hello, my name is Kenny Hill. I'm from Cornerstone Assembly of God, and today I'm going to be preaching over the topic of sexual sin. And the verses I'm going to be reading out of is 1 Corinthians 6.18, Matthew 5.28, Proverbs 6.32, Proverbs 6.27, 1 Corinthians 10.13, and Hebrews 4.16. So matter of fact, did y'all know that sexual sin in the Bible has 67 verses talking about it, but somehow as Christians we seem to talk about this sin the least? Why are we falling short? Why are we allowing Satan to keep God's people in the dark about this sin? So that way people can, we're hindering them from overcoming this sin. And so today I'm going to be giving up power breaking tools from God to help y'all overcome. So that's why y'all can apply and walk in purity and strengthen others and lift up others. So first we got to know is, is what is sexual sin? What is being sexual immoral? And the Bible talks about it. It's sex outside of marriage. It's lust. It's homosexuality. It's self-pleasure. And it's looking at pornography. All these things do such a damage in your walk with the Lord. It makes you feel guilty like no other sin because it's so fleshful. It feels so close to home. It feels so right. But at the same time, in the Bible, it says in 1 Corinthians 6, 18, it says, flee from sexual morality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexual immoral person sins against his own body. And so, see, that's where we get down to self-pleasure. And self-pleasure is something the Lord has normalized. It says that you, you need it. You should apply it in your life. You should experiment with yourself and see what you like and find out where you want to go and what sexuality you want to be. But that's a lie from the enemy that we can no longer allow um, God's people to stay in the darkness about. And so that's where we get to Matthew 5, 28, which says, But I say to you that anyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her within his heart. And so whenever you're looking at pornography and you're committing the sin of self-pleasure, you're literally lusting over other people's sexual acts. This is so defiling to God. This is literally such an abomination. And so, but say you don't watch pornography when you commit the um, sin of self-pleasure. You cannot tell me that one lustful thought of a person or anything in, in your life that you seem lustful does not pop in your head and so eventually you'll fall so deep into self-pleasure you'll crave the full experience and this will lead to adultery which is sex outside of marriage see sex is a gift from god but when we use it outside of marriage it clearly says in proverbs 6 32 he who commits adultery lacks sin and he who does it destroys himself see this will proven time and time again that it'll destroy your life and make you feel so far and so distant from god and so my question to you to help you fight this is what are you allowing in your life? What are you taking in? What is your entrances and allowing the sin into your life? And that's where we get to where if you want to fight this sin, you have to close off the entrance in, for the sin into yeah, your life. Yeah. And that's where we get to Proverbs 6, 27, which says, can a man carry fire next to his chest and not be burned? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the fire that you're carrying next to your chest. Yeah. Let's talk about the things that you're looking at online. Let's talk about the people you're talking to, the sexual conversations you're indulging in at school and thinking, oh, it's fine, it's okay. But eventually at nighttime, when you're alone, when you're on your phone, these things are all going to creep up on you and eventually burn you. And so my question is, are you following half-dressed people on socials? Are you snapping people you don't need to be snapped? need to be snapping are you looking at things you shouldn't be looking at talking about things you shouldn't be talking about because whenever you do these things it's so much fire you're holding to your chest and eventually you're going to be burned you're going to be engulfed you're going to feel trapped you're going to feel like you're literally so far from god and i felt like that so many times i used to get so angry i would literally just whenever i would fall for sexual sin i would throw things around my room i would get so mad i would pull on my hair i would get so mad because i was like god i'm never going to overcome this this literally feels like myself this feels like my fleshful and sinful nature i'm never going to overcome but God says in 1 Corinthians 10, 10, 10, 13, no temptation is overtaking you that is not common to man. Others are going through this too, but you can overcome because it says he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure. So that's yeah. the way you'll be able to overcome. Mm -hmm. See, God is so faithful when you're feeling like you're about to fall for the sin. You can stop dead in the act, even dead in the sin because he's the God of the valley high and the valley yeah. low. Yeah. And you can yeah. say, God, I need your help. I need your strength to go. Um, and close out these websites. I need your strength to stop talking to these people. God, I need your help, Lord. Help me. And whenever he does, he's just going to set such a separation from sexual sin into purity. He'll show you the path. If you say, God, show me the correct path to purity, he'll lead you to that, and he'll guide you to it. And so say, you've been stuck in this sin, though. Say you're currently sitting in sexual sin right now as we speak. Say you probably know you're going to struggle with it tonight. God says in Hebrews 4.16, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God, and there we will find his grace and his mercy whenever we need it most. Go to God. Ask for repentance. Ask for his grace. He's faithful to provide it and ask him for a way of escape because he'll give it to you so that's way you can endure and make it through. 
So God already died and he rose. And my question to you is, is will you go to that grave study for a son on the cross or will you stay in a lifestyle of sexual sin and end up in hell?